Okay, welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos. In our last part of the series, we uh, put the input shaft into the uh, transfer box. We also checked the end float and we showed you how to set it up. And in this video, we're going to be fitting the intermediate gears and showing you how to set a preload. <laughs> Okay, okay, so if you haven't stripped off the intermediate gear pin, it's held on by a nut, and then you have a lock peg with a M8 bolt. And I want to tell you right now, if you haven't been followers, this is the gearing that has a collapsible spacer in between the two bearings. There is a difference, the older boxes will have a shim here, which is set up in a different manner. This one is the LT230R, which is on the earlier Defenders. I need to apologise now for not giving you part numbers for every single part. The reason for this is there are variants in uh, transfer boxes. What you need to do is have a work with your bare mark parts distributors, armed with the serial number of your transfer box and take it from there. Right, so the intermediate gear, if you've been watching as you'll know it has a collapsible spacer in the middle here and then you have two bearings as support. Right, there's a lot of gunk in here, so what I'm going to do is wash all this out, first of all, and then check the condition of the components. Generally, what we'll be looking for is any missing teeth or chipped teeth, uh, unusual gear wear, or if the gears are actually worn to a, a razor's edge, then that component will be US. Right, so the gasket set we're using is BR3292 from Bearmark, and in that set you have O-rings right so this is the intermediate shaft or intermediate shaft pin if you like basically you want to be looking for the condition of it if it's worn damaged or if it has a stepped wearing on the pin then you really need to replace it it's about 30 pounds maximum this one is well this one's going to be changed but for the use of this tutorial we're actually going to use it the other thing you need to check, and this is vital, is this pin recess here in the casing. If it's worn at all, then the casing is US. There's nothing you can do about it. And when I say US, that means unserviceable. There's an O-ring in here as well, which needs to be changed, which will be in the gasket set. You can pull this out with a screwdriver. Make sure that you don't damage any of the edges where the recess is. Right, so the bearing races have been knocked out, and we'll have a good look at these. They're worn, you know, the shine has come off them, and on this bearing here, the um, you can see a little bit of marking on it. Well, at the price of them, it's worth replacing whatever. You can buy the bearings separately, if needs be, from a bearing supply. They will have numbers on them. This is the collapsible spacer, and it's quite a thin piece of metal. It's a one use only component, so once it's been used, then you cannot reuse it. So chuck it away and put a new one in. Bearing race stops are circlips. You can see them clearly here. There's one either end. It's highly recommended that they are replaced when you change the bearings. Okay, so that's the other end. Pop them out, put new ones in. Bearings themselves, well, as always, you have your bearing etiquette. Make sure they're clean and they stay in the packets until you're ready to use them. This one here will be greased before it's put in. Plenty of ways to put a bearing race in. I'm using the caveman method today, which is a hammer, which is gently tapping the race into place. You can use a bearing race driver like so. The kits are very cheap and they are excellent to use. Um, a final thing with these is because they are recessed, you need to use something to get them below the edge. So remember this if you're having to do this in a bush style fashion. What we'll have is the bearing races should sit up against the circlips and you have one either end and it's snugly fitted into place. To control putting the gear back into the casing, you're going to use a rope or something. Um, we couldn't find any rope anywhere in this workshop and had to use a piece of um, wire. Okay, but basically you need to use something to support the gear as you drop it into the casing. What we have here is a socket which fits through the pin hole at the back of the uh, transfer box. As we drop the gearing into place, we're holding the bearings there. 
we'll get to a point where we can use this as a support tool so we're basically pushing it in supporting the bearing on the rear and then pushing the pin through so it's going to go through the bearing through the collapsible spacer don't whack it with a hammer at this point and then it's going to come out the other side obviously the bearing is supported so that's giving it um, a guide usually there is a, a tool which is called a guide pin and we haven't got one so we're using the socket okay so that's through that's fine just remember to remove your rope that you've used next thing to do is to put your lock tab or your positioning tab into place and then tighten this nut up with thread lock on it to 25 newton meters you'll then want to fit the um, nut on the end which will be a staked nut and this will be new the next thing to do is to set the preload on this the first thing um, what we're going to do is tighten this nut up until we get the plate or the lift out of the gears what won't happen is using a spanner okay because a spanner isn't long enough okay you nip it up and you'll have this much play on the gearing this is not what we need it's not end flow it is a preload on this um, set of bearings we have 30 mil socket a long bar which is needed because this can be tight and then it's a matter of pulling it up first of all until there's no movement not too tight at first and that's checking with a bar and then pull it again this is the easiest way of doing it the manual might say something different but basically what we want to achieve is no movement and it's not tight okay right so there's still play on here uh, this is what you call in float we've got to eradicate that first I'd suggest that you do this in increments move the nut a little bit and then check and then move it some more and check again basically this is quite hard to do on the bench because you've got to hold the casing while you're pulling up the nut you'll get a feel for it basically you just want to nip it up so there's no movement on the shaft like so right so um, just to cut the video a bit shorter we'll cut out most of this because it does take a while basically what we have is no movement on the shaft at all okay the bearings are obviously not nipped up we've just taken out the end flow now that's quite a smooth mover but now what we need to do is add some preload to the bearing okay so it is only a little bit of preload it needs okay so let's go to the workshop manual basically you need a torque reader and a special socket on the back of the input shaft so you can get an extra 1.5 newton meters of um, drag on the input gear as you're measuring it now this is an impossibility with us even like we do we have a uh, torque meter there's no way that we can put a socket onto this part of the gear so we've had to find another way looking back at the manual number five number five says tighten the intermediate shaft nut in small stages checking the torque turn to the gears until the main shaft input gear torque has increased by 1.25 newton meters this is the bearings preload value okay so we'll go back to an old-fashioned method of uh, pulling this and measuring the kilograms it takes to turn the input shaft the maximum you want on this is 2.2 newton meters right so with the intermediate gear fixed we can then measure the resistance and then add 1.25 newton meters so the formula is first of all 1.25 newton meters is equal to 0 0.127 kilogram force meter so we need to do some maths and uh, kgf uh, in kilograms the answer is they are actually equal so using a converter on the internet 0 0.127 kgf is equal to 127 grams in weight so your spring balance that you need is going to be one that is quite sensitive so what you're going to be looking on your spring balance is for about 350 grams maximum right so this is all right it's hunky-dory and the bearing has been preloaded it is it shouldn't be tight you could turn that easily with your hand if it feels tight or notchy then you need to reset it again once you've done that then it's just a matter of staking this nut off so it's not going to move anywhere 